Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and training for a marathon with mountains episode five. You join me on a Tuesday night for a moderate effort run and it's my second in a new pair of Scarpa trail running shoes. Not the most popular brand in the UK, but they do come highly recommended from my coach, Jason Cavill. So let's get the box opened up. It's the Scarpa Ribel Run. These are billed as a short to middle distance trail and mountain running shoe. A claim I'm quite surprised about. I'll explain why from the run, but we bought them for the Yorkshire Three Peaks. We were gonna use the Adidas Speed Ultra, but they're just not quite comfortable and protective enough for that course. These are gonna get such a good test this week. We've got a really tough hill session tomorrow night. Tonight's a faster one, so we'll get to see how responsive they are before the weekend we hit the North York Moors. Really tough underfoot there, and as always, I'll bring you my honest opinion at every stage of the week before at the end of the week we summarise everything together and let you know whether these things are worth buying. Right, time's getting on so let's get these things laced up and hit the trail. Okay, so the Scarpa Ribel Run. Taking it out the box, I originally got an eight and a half UK. That's my normal true to size. And it was too small, too short in the length. And I could feel my pinky toe. So I sized up, went to a nine. That's half a size more. And they're just slightly, slightly too big. I'm gonna try them anyway, because they feel like a fantastic shoe, which we'll come on to in just a minute. But I do foresee slight issues we're sloshing about in the shoe. Now, I don't believe this is a common issue. I think it's a me thing, not a shoe thing. So I'm gonna try and not take that into account too much as we talk about the shoe. So let's begin with the lacing. It's a quick lace system, similar to Salomon's. I would argue better. It really does hug the foot and wraps around the arch and it almost forms a protective shell. Feels like you've got a tank on your foot, but not in a bad way, not in a heavy way. It's just really well protected, comfortable, and gives you a lot of confidence with where you're putting the foot. It's quite precise. It's a four mil drop, which shoots me down to the ground and something I think more shoe manufacturers should try to implement. And while we're on the subject of comfort, let's discuss that claim that it's a short to middle distance responsive shoe. Definitely responsive, definitely can do those distances, but I feel like it can touch into the ultras as well. Certainly up to like a 55 mile race. There's plenty of cushion in there and so much protection, but it doesn't lack the grip, precision and responsiveness you'd want in those shorter races. I think that's why Scarpa have marketed it the way that they have. Happy memories, guys. The last time we ran past those gates, we'd just done 48 miles. The first time I'd ever done that distance and finished third in the hard walls 40. There we go, job done, guys. Coasting along in the eight minute mile range. I'll pull all the stats up on screen. All thanks to the Ribel Run. These are a cracking ride, guys. Very responsive, gave me something back when I was trying to push off. And the early impressions for the speed side of things are really good. Of course, we've still got to hit the hills tomorrow, so see how it grips as I'm trying to push on up. And the moors on that really undulating, tough going terrain. Early impressions, very impressed. Let's give you an idea on the build quality. So we've got that quick lace system, which pulls the Eva overlays together. That wraps around the uh, arch of the foot. It's got a sock system there, but like I say, those overlays do wrap in. On the underside, on the outsole, we've got sticky gum. It's a compound I've never heard of, but I really do like it. I prefer it to the Vibram that you get on the Speedgoat 4s. And talking of that, let's compare the width. 
For me, the Speedgoat Foil and Wide Fit is wider, naturally, uh, but the Scarpa is wide enough. I'd actually choose this for most shorter distance ultras, I reckon, over the Speedgoat, because it's not as clumsy, um, but it's still comfortable. This could be one of the best built shoes I've ever worn, with all these overlays, the protection in the toe box, and just all the way throughout the shoe. I reckon you can get four to 500 miles at least out of this thing, but it's still early days. We've still got a whole week of training to go, so let's move on to tomorrow and we'll see how it gets on in the hill session her alarm goes off and she gets up to watch the morning news doesn't work no more but tells a lot of stories about you hey guys welcome to Huttonley Hall just finished the hill session with Jason hence why I've not got much footage and definitely none of the run itself I felt like it'd be a bit rude with my coach giving me some of this time to go filming the whole thing uh, so the session itself went really well uh, an hour and a half worth of running in, almost 1800 foot a climb sub nine minute miles which i thought was really good to be honest jason's in fantastic form he just finished 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 second in pinnacle ridge extreme in the lake district so certainly hitting his stride and he really did whoop my ass tonight at the top of every climb we did 20 squat thrusts that's to try and mimic what's going to happen in the race where my legs accumulate this lactate and then we've got to really push hard and then be able to push off the top of the hill. I've actually smacked my knee and I want to get back to the car and get back home to get that cleaned up and just try and get rested up because it's getting late, I'm starving and uh, we've got some strength work tomorrow, more running Friday, a long run Saturday, I need to take good care of myself. And a really quick update on the Ribel run, it handled the hill session so well, really impressed with how the shoe does on all terrain. I mean, we're on moorland, grass, rock, We've been through streams, wet, dry, everything, and this super gum compound sticks to the lot. Only small lugs, but to be honest, even going through mud, I didn't have an issue. Highly recommend it for that. Uh, still the slight issue of they're a little bit sloshy, so I'm a bit worried that might be a problem on the really technical stuff, but we won't know until we get onto it. That's what the weekend is for. When we get up on the Wayne Stones, that really is a technical course, so we'll find out on Saturday just how it'll do in that. But it offered lots of bad on the ups really secure very consistent on the descents so great for that as well hello <laughs> we've got a mate as well i've got to say i'm so lucky to live up here um, i'm only literally 20 minutes drive from these moors i've got mates like this behind me and uh, yeah views like this to enjoy at the end of a run very very lucky and fortunate anyway my mates off for his dinner so i think i'm gonna join him i'll see you saturday on the way in stones people don't stay the same you know Morning guys, welcome to Chop Yard. We've got a two hour easy run today. We'll talk about my book of the week later on. Got the GoPro to get some stunning footage. This is one of my favorite routes to do. In terms of nutrition, I'm gonna be taking a Vela Forte bar. Um, probably lasts me about an hour and the chew as well. That should just get some energy in later on in the run. I'm a little bit tired after Wednesday night's hill session and just the week in general, but I can't wait to get some of these climbs in and see what the Scarpa can do on this course. We're just making our way up one of the biggest climbs in North Yorkshire, guys. Like I say, it's meant to be an easy effort today. We're going to be dipping into moderate on the climbs. Very race specific, but we'll be coming back up here in a few weeks, maybe three weeks time to do some proper hill reps. It's probably a good 20, 25 minutes long this climb. So it's about as close as I'm going to get to race specific.
well, we're almost five miles into the run, guys, and I haven't seen a soul the whole way around. I've had the most to myself, beautiful views, and we're about to hit the really big climbs. You know what that means? Really big descent. So let's see what the Scarpa Ribble Run can do. Just look at this view, guys. Absolutely gorgeous up here. We've done a couple of descents now, so I thought I'd give you a few more thoughts on the Scarpa Ribel run during descending. This super gum is so impressive. It sticks to rock, whether it's wet or dry. It's really good in the mud. And when you put your foot down, you feel like it's going to stay there. I'd say it's better than the Vibram on the Speedgo. I'd say it's better than the Butar Rubber on all of VJ shoes. For me, it's the best outsole I've tried. We'll round up my overall impressions of the shoe later on but we need to get on with this thing. We've got about another four or five mile to do yet. Stumbling home, we don't know where we're going. Should have turned back hours ago. Out of our minds, I guess we're sleeping outside. It's still a good time, even in the cold. Get out the road, I told you. A car's coming, I stop you. You know why. It's all downhill back to the car now, guys. So let's have a quick chat about the week's training and how it's gone. So we'll have done six runs by the end of the week, about 44, 45 miles, I think. Uh, once today and tomorrow's out the way. And I'm really happy with how I manage the intensity. Tuesday's moderate effort followed by Wednesday's hill session was a real big ask. It's the first time we've really stepped it up. So I'm happy with how the body's responded. Only slight negative. After the uh, hardballs race, I did have a little issue on the outside of my knee, niggling a little bit, pulling. Uh, it came back during training a couple of weeks back. It's returned again now. May just be because we need to adapt and get used to this higher intensity mileage. By the time today's runs through, we've done about 13 miles, so that's not a bad first run back. And loads of elevation gain, which is very appropriate for the Three Peaks race. Next week really jumps up again in intensity. Wednesday's hill session is an absolute killer, but I won't spoil the surprise on that. We'll be doing a single video just on that session, hopefully, if the weather allows. Anyway, let's get back to the car and I can give you my final thoughts on the Scarpa Ribel run. What a brilliant run, guys. I absolutely love that course. Right, time's getting on, so let's get you my final thoughts on the Scarpa Ribel run. We'll begin with comfort, and it's a thumbs up from me. Lots of cushioning, loads of room in the toe box, good room in the heel, so stability's okay. That sock liner is fantastic, along with the lace system that pulls the either overlays around your arch. Just an all-round quality shoe for almost any distance. Durability, I predict this is gonna be the most durable mountain and trail run shoe on the market hands down bold claim but i honestly believe that the toe box and all the overlays around here have barely even been touched after 40 odd miles you've seen the sort of terrain i've been on this week really is gnarly stuff especially today and the outsole i can't believe it's barely even got a scratch on it my speed goat falls after uh, the hard walls 40 got absolutely mashed up and that was mainly on grass this has been on rock and really hard stuff and it's held up fantastically well best use well i think you can take this on any 
terrain. We've had it on tarmac today, rock, grass, fells. You can, you name it, you can run on it. And in terms of distance, I think any distance really, it's not the lightest shoe in the world. So you're not gonna wanna go out and do a quick 10K, uh, but anything above that, even up to the 55 mile races will be spot on. The only downside of the shoe is I had to half a size up. That means that sock liner has a little bit too much room um, and the laces are quite long and it doesn't quite wrap in for me. But if you can get these true to size, then definitely go for it. I'm gonna put my neck on the line here and say these are the most underrated shoes of 2021. I can't believe more people aren't talking about them in the UK. And to cap the episode off, my book of the week, it's Runner by Lizzie Hawker. Lizzie's such an amazing person. Um, she went and did the UTMB for the first time as a complete unknown and smashed the core. She's been into the Nepal area and done Kathmandu to Everest. Absolutely inspirational runner. You even get some lovely pictures of Everest. Um, it's just an inspiring read um, of an unknown entity in the ultra running world who made it big. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching as always. Uh, and the really kind comments I've been receiving over the last couple of episodes, they really are appreciated and it keeps me going. Right guys, take care and I'll catch you with the next one. See you later.